These questions are designed to unfold and explain mm -hmm. the teachings of Ramana Maharshi. As set out in his original booklet, Who Am I? and Self-Inquiry. And <clears throat> my intention is to make a book uh, with these questions. And I've asked these questions to about 15 different people here in India. And I'm planning to call the book Blueprints for Awakening. So each person has had the same questions and the intention is that we'll have, people can see the different answers. Ramana proposed the fundamental question, who am I? Who are you? The same I am which has raised this question. you like to expand? This is the answer. This is only I am and nothing but I am. Many Western seekers come to India looking for enlightenment as if it is an experience. What is enlightenment? The question itself is wrongly worded. There is no Westerners, there is no Easterners, there is no bondage, there is no enlightenment. There is a, the British have a <coughs> proverb, you raise the dust only to put it down. You imagine, we imagine, when I say you, it includes the speaker. Imagine, we are so-and-so, Indian, Hindu, we are Americans, and we are in bondage, proved by facts. I don't know Sanskrit, I don't know Bhagavad Gita, I don't know Bible, some facts. And based on that ignorance, which is not there, we raise this question, how to get enlightenment, as if there is enlightenment different from ignorance. You first bracket yourself, being an ignorant being, or that is how you have been told, and you want enlightenment. And further you are told, you go to India, it's a very sacred country, holy place, strive hard there, at least minimum of three years, then you will find enlightenment. All raising more dust. What will happen if you don't raise the dust at all? Why are you so excited to raise the dust and then say, I want to put down the dust. The same trick for thousands of years we are playing upon ourselves. Why are we playing this game? That we are ignorant, we are bound, bondage, Immediately, the brain will give reasons. Yes, I have misery, sorrow. 
inequity, inadequacy, illiteracy, poverty, as long as we are going to presume we are in bondage, we will always be seeking enlightenment. Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi said, from the standpoint of non-truth, you will never reach the truth. We presume we are the non-truth and try to seek the truth. What is seeking the truth? A movement. We presume we are in a state of ignorance for there are scriptures to give you reasons. What are the impediments? What are the obstacles? Why you are in bondage? And then the same book, the scriptures, after 50 pages, suggest you how to get released from that. This is merely sales talk. <laughs> Why do you presume we are in bondage? Why project the untruth and then make a sincere effort to know the truth? Remember, all of us, each one of us are very sincere to ourselves. I am not talking about selfishness, otherwise you won't be here. We think we are very sincere, we are seekers, we have to, we are in bondage. So, we have to seek enlightenment. Even if you presume that you are unenlightened and you need enlightenment, what are you doing right now? Maharshi said, there is nothing wrong in your assumption. If you want to go either from here or from Nanagaru Ashram to Arunachaleshwara temple, which is to our eastern side, Ramana Maharshi never doubts, never contradicts, never puts down, never ridicules or even makes light of anything. So he appreciates, yes, yes, you want to go to Arunachaleshwara Devs temple by all means. I am prepared to walk, I am prepared to stay day and night till I see the linga inside the temple. You are prepared to take efforts and your intention is very genuine and you start walking towards having this ideal as Arunachaleshwara temple, but you do not reach there at all even after one month. What is the reason? And you have put on so much of effort, walking, walking, non-stop. You have not had food, you have not slept, you have not rested. But one month you have walked, you have not reached Arunachaleshwara temple. What is the defect? There is no defect. Your aspiration is sincere. Your efforts are really well executed. Straining, by way of straining, but you have not achieved. Because, Maharshi says, instead of taking the eastern path, you have taken the western path. Arunachaleshwara temple is in the eastern side. You are walking with all sincerity, with all your straining your muscles, go on walking, walking, walking. There is nothing defective in the aim or in your effort. But the direction is wrong. Apply it here. You think you are bound and you want enlightenment. You think you are untruth and you are marching towards the truth. Again here the intention is beautiful. The effort are all genuine, but we have wasted 3000 years. <laughs> From Buddha onwards the same game is being played. Perhaps even before Buddha, but just for our convenience sake, our brain could record only up to 3000 years, <laughs> starting with Buddha. We are past masters 
in not following the master's instructions. <laughs> so we left Buddha, we held on to Jesus Christ. Now I will reach the truth. Again, we have missed it. Adi Shankara, thousand years back. Don't bracket yourself only with Christianity and American. We have all been seekers. Doesn't matter which skin, which body we took. The aspiration within us is the genuine thing. Whether you are a Jew, Jew or a Zoroastrian or a Hindu, doesn't matter. So, with Adi Shankara, we were all there. Remember, this is not just a fanciful thinking. We missed him. We have come to Ramana Maharshi. The same Buddha, the same Jesus Christ, the same Adi Shankara, the same Ramana, the same Premananda, the same Ganeshan. Fill up the blank with all your names. I don't know all your names. We have taken the western path, western, how to say? Direction. Direction, sir, thank you. That's why we have not got it. And today, here and now, we are taking the eastern direction. And we are here. We are the truth. Give up the thought that there is a movement from non-truth to truth. Why do you presume you are in bondage and ignorance? And find out who has suggested to you you are in bondage, you have to get freedom, enlightenment. Who? A book? A so-called master? And even if a book has suggested that, even a so-called master has to suggested that, why did you accept it? Find out. And even if you had accepted it, why did you not get the right direction? Going to Arunachaleshwara temple is good. You are walking, walking, walking very fast is good. All energy you have wasted, good. But why have you failed to get the right direction? It is east, not west. As long as you seek the truth outside, you will be traveling in the west. You remember Mullah Nasiruddin's story? Which I am very fond I mean, I have read only. <laughs> I am not more sure to create a Mullah Nasiruddin story. He creates. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like you to tell us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mullah Nasiruddin was seated outside his village, just a few steps outside his village, like outside my compound, on the side of the road. A very earnest man came and he looked very tired and he looked also very sincere. He said, Sir, I have come 200 miles away searching for Mullah Nasiruddin's village. I have not yet found it. But I, I have determined I will find not only Mullah Nasiruddin's village, but I will find him also because he has given me a revelation. So any amount of strain, stress, I am prepared to take. Tell me, sir, which way I have to walk? How long is it there? I am prepared to walk even 200 miles more or 300 miles more. Not knowing that it was Mullah Nasruddin, he was even uh, very, he was very eager, so he was step, putting his steps like this and then talking to him, going this direction. So Mullah Nasruddin told him, you want to know when you will reach his village? He said, yes, sir. Look at my eagerness. He said, if you take this path, I don't know when you will reach him, because you have to go all the way around the world. <laughs> If only you turn, right about turn, it's only a few steps. You have just now come out of Mullah Nasruddin's village. I am Mullah Nasruddin. 
this is all we need give up this hallucination self created by you that you are in untruth you are in enslavement in bondage and i seek enlightenment from whom i can <coughs> seek when i will seek where i will see where i will get who will give it to me we have done this <coughs> clowns job for 3000 years <coughs> <coughs> and we call it spiritual entertainment <laughs> spiritual tourism from ashram to ashram and one guru to another guru sir i am not making light of this i am not making a humor or jo joke of this ramana maharshi was asked i want to i have come here all the way from long distance to know god i am prepared to go anywhere maharshi bhagwan they used to call him tell us wherever you will direct us i my only desire is to see god to be god bhagwan smiled and then said he asked why are you smiling but maharshi never used to immediately reply like the fool here seated <laughs> immediately jumping to reply or jumping to put counter question his method of answer was silence and after a little i don't know whether how long the silence was he gave a mischievous smile so the questioner said why are you smiling at me i am very sincere <laughs> he said your question looks is similar to a man who wants to see the sun taking a candle and say ha, asking me how to see the sun with the help of the candle <laughs> then he he said please tell me something that i could understand just as mulla nasruddin in this story bhagwan said you are god god is within you and as long as you are going to seek god outside it only you can be seeking traveling because you are going west west direction it only you will be going seeking seeking here and now wake up there is no enlightenment because there has never been a bondage you are never ignorant you are that i am the question was put by the i am the answer had come from the i am and the listeners are all i am <laughs> there is nothing but i am so where is the question of <coughs> i think maybe <laughs> many people who start on this journey are starting from a feeling of suffering they have some pain <laughs> their life is not really working and so they feel they're suffering and they're looking for something that will bring them peace if you want instantaneous release from suffering this is also an answer from maharshi go to sleep <laughs> there is no suffering there in sleep nobody <coughs> complains about any suffering <laughs> and maharshi says that's your real state not this waking waking is business hours <laughs> making money engaging yourself with the exchange of i will give you little entertainment you give me money and the moment i get money somebody robs it so i suffer <laughs> enjoyment suffering pleasure pain pleasure pain you can never stop this there is no release from suffering because there is no suffering it is not a concept don't accept it as a concept don't give importance to your brain which says it is a concept <coughs> sit pay attention to the truth maharshi has given a definition for truth and apply it to all your uh, modes of testing truth is that 
which should be available <coughs> to all under all conditions and at all times three qualifications to all it should not be available only to jesus christ and that is not truth if it is only available to bhagavan sri ramana marshi that is not truth it should be available to all under all conditions at all times don't think it is a big puzzle it's very the simplest puzzle <coughs> i have ever come across because the only one thing which stands to these three qualifications the feeling of your being alive is always there which the scriptures call as i am i am is not a word do we converted into a word because we are mad after conversations where are you going i am going to the ashram i am going up the hill but i am is not a word it is a feeling of existence when you identify that feeling of existence to the body you give so much of importance i am an american <laughs> sir may i call you swami or how to call you address you you could try premananda premananda mm-hmm. premananda ji i was there with robert adams have you heard of robert adams a great master <coughs> american not a hindu body a jnani fully realized jnani without any blemish she was the beautiful jnani i had the great opportunity of visiting him continuously for 3 years in america first in hollywood then in sedona i loved him so much and <clears throat> he had parkinsons maybe other diseases so he had to be seated just as i had open heart surgery so i had to do like this when this physical body has something and you decorate it like a corps <laughs> <coughs> so he was also seated and i used to hold his one knee sit i like mahatmas not only their words their presence their every movement even a finger movement even the mustache hair's movement i love because everything is truth truth is what bliss truth is not a concept and when there is that bliss in robert adams for a fool like me seated next to him i was also swimming in bliss <coughs> there was another friend of robert adams 20 years they were all close friends john wilkins he just held another knee of robert <laughs> and then said robert today we have been so close friends and i have been listening to your talks today i want you to make me understand in my own level what is truth and what is non truth what is reality and what is non reality robert don't play the game of game of saying it is omnipresence it is omnipotence it is everywhere there there is no place where it is not there all that i don't want i have heard it enough <laughs> <laughs> but make me understand from my level and robert is a like premananda is a very jolly good fellow <laughs> apart from unfortunately being a nyani he was also a jolly man very happy man so he was smiling listening like that and when john Wil- wilkins asked this conditional conditional prayer you must make me understand see how beautifully robert clarified suddenly he assumed a very serious look because his disciple his devotees admirers knew his moods change because of the disease so one moment he was very happy next moment he assumed a very angry face who are you then john wilkins thought that robert is in a different mood he has he he is capable of forgetting also so he has forgotten him 
<laughs> this is all his problem, not Robert's problem. This is all his thinking. So he said, I'm John Wilkins. He just looked pleadingly. He was looking at him. I'm John Wilkins. And Robert again looked at him. I'm John Wilkins. Then Robert gave one of the most beautiful smiles I have ever come, come across in my life. He said, John, in that, I am is the truth. John Wilkins is the untruth. I am is the reality. John Wilkins is the unreality. There were 70, 80 people in the hall. Everyone went into Samadhi. Absolute silence. Not only John Wilkins was put into that state of ecstasy. Myself, everyone there. For nearly for five minutes, there is nothing but joy. I am is the truth. <coughs> John Wilkins is the non-truth. So when John Wilkins wants to know the truth, he will never get it. He will become <coughs> next V Ganeshan, the next birth. John Wilkins will become V Ganeshan, and then again he will be emphasizing on V Ganeshan. He will become. He will be born as a donkey. <laughs> or a monkey, go on. And this monkey or this John Wilkins or whatever Mary, whatever your names are, as long as you are holding going to be Mary or John Wilkins and from there you want to know what is the I am, you will not. You have to, not even you, you have to is not the proper answer. You are the I am. When you experience the I am here and now, the I am that is now talking, the I am now is listening, <coughs> that experiencing is the truth. And that experiencing right now, not viewing the video after two months in your room. You are not going to be. Right now, <coughs> you are the truth. And from that state of the truth, try to raise this question. Is there enlightenment? When will the enlightenment will dawn? As long as you are going to hold on to John Wilkins, the interview has no end. <laughs> I have to move to the next question then. <laughs> <clears throat> I was going to ask you this question, but now I'll change it. Are there any qualifications for enlightenment? Yes. <laughs> Giving up the non-truth. <clears throat> Maharishi was asked, two questions were asked. A scientist came, real scientist, <clears throat> genuine scientist came. He read Maharishi's teaching. He liked it, but he had one doubt whether this is esotericism, mysticism, something to be believed into. So he put this question, Maharshi, is your teaching scientific? This teaching of who am I, finding out the I am, is it scientific? Maharshi said, <coughs> what can be more scientific than asserting the truth and rejecting the non-truth? <coughs> and Maharshi said, this place is the center for unlearning. Whatever that you have learnt, <coughs> gathered in your brain, when you unload yourself, the truth dawns. No qualification is necessary. Qualification is another explanation from the stand standpoint of untruth. You stand in the un <coughs> platform of untruth and then write a book. 
you are a sinner i will give you courses in to purify everything is based on maharshi gives this example when the entire non truth has to be given up why are you holding on to one section of the non truth and then want to build up come back to the truth maharshi gives this example when you go to a hair cutting salon lot of hair and then you want to read of them he has cut do you bend down and start measuring what all that have been what all the long hairs short hairs how many of them bundle them together in one sweep you send them you don't sit and start asking measuring counting weighing weighing nothing the whole non truth has to be rejected right now not tomorrow what qualification do you need to be the truth what qualification do you need to know that you are a human being if you if you a book says you should be a good human being any adjective needs qualification truth doesn't need any qualification non truth needs lot of proof i always share with my friends can we call this evening how do you americans call this actually i should just explain we are mostly german english and australian <coughs> oh well, no doesn't matter That's, there is doesn't no american western <laughs> yes <laughs> how do you call this this is evening <coughs> if you to say <coughs> excuse me this is a fact this is the evening look at it just simply don't complicate we are masters in complicating ourselves <laughs> we become simple like a child that's what jesus christ said unless you become children you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven we all want to be adults elderly people educated people become child children simple to know that this is evening there is no contradiction either in german language or chinese language or brit indian language two things notice suppose <coughs> if i say this is sunrise time early morning which is non truth i have to prove for this being the evening there is no proof necessary you all of us know it's very simple but look at it if i say this is night dead night i have to prove because it is the non truth and the evening as a truth needs no qualification but when i want to say today is saturday saturday evening this is very very auspicious for worshiping a particular hindu god so this is very auspicious evening which is all falsehood i have to prove i have to bring in a hindu scripture i am not saying this lord shiva is saying this look at this book all non truths wants proof truth doesn't want any proof no qualification you are the truth what what more proof do you want non truth which is conceptual what is non truth thought oriented concept how do you know today saturday for a hindu like me or my secretary who is very orthodox saturday evening is very sacred who said so some book <laughs> <laughs> so i suppose you a german you say no no anuradha I don't accept your saying. I don't see any sacredness in this evening. <laughs> Then she has to come with proof. You are Papa Ji's devotee. You should have some faith in Hinduism. <laughs> Look at this book. All proofs. But to say this is the evening, what proof do you need? <laughs> what qualification should it have? <laughs> you know. <clears throat> And this truth about yourself, the I am, needs no support. no confirmation from anyone else and we have forgotten the truth that's what ramana maharshi says you have forgotten 
and a guru in the human form, <coughs> either in the form of Ramana Maharshi or in the form of Papaji or Nisargadatta Maharaj, it's the only importance just to remind us, hey, you wanted to go to Arunachaleshwara temple, you are walking western side, turn your direction, that's all. The, the Arunachaleshwara temple is there, your eagerness is there, nothing truth doesn't need any qualification, any proof, any establishment, any confirmation, it's there. If it is not there, it can be created. The word sacredness, isn't it? You have to assume a solemn attitude to create sacredness. This evening is sacred evening. The evening, harmless evening, doesn't need any, any assumption. But when you have this falsehood, this evening is sacred evening, then you have to assume even your body has to bend down, assume a position, <laughs> and what about 20 years of meditation? Is Not some 20 years, I am talking necessary? about 3,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> you are here, limiting it to 20 years. 3,000 years. We were at the foot of the great master Gautama Buddha. He said, wake up. We did not. Because we were taking the western way, direction. Because there lies pleasure. In the western side, in the very first Indian Upanishad gives, suggests there are two paths. I mean, it gives it beautifully, poetically. A bird is seated on a tree, and there are two fruits in the tree. And it has a choice to eat, not both, but one of them. One of the fruits is called prayas, the outward path of pleasure, <coughs> achievements, success. That is prayas and enjoyment. Enjoyment includes physical, uh, um, um, cumulative, accumulating, everything prayas. And the other fruit is shreyas, which is a path inward. You will always be happy, no achievements, no success, no time, no space, no causation, nobody. You are just ananda. Prem and ananda. The second fruit. Love and because love and bliss are the same, Maharshi said. They are not two things. It's a rhetoric. Premananda is a rhetoric. This fruit is Premananda, second fruit. And you have got the choice either to eat that prayers fruit and then go. We have been doing that. And you have come, thanks to Premanand, to Arunachala, to wake up. And that fruit had not given you anything. 3,000 years we have wasted. Choose the second fruit. This path of Shreyas. That is, your whole attention should be <coughs> only on truth. And truth will express itself. You cannot define truth. The moment you try to define truth, that is from the untruth, based on scriptures, mm -hmm. based on your experience, which are all limited, what is untruth? That which comes and goes is untruth. <coughs> that which permanently stays is the truth. What is that which permanently stays? 3,000 years back we were there, even now we are. The aliveness, the being, the I am, is undeniable. If you like to take the path of prayers, if you want to extend yourself once more in the world, another 5,000 years you will be living. Sometimes um, it's said that it's helpful to have a sattvic mind in order to see the truth. All these are all words. Again, anything that the mind suggests, the books suggest, somebody else suggests to you, are all untruth. So Ramana said that self-inquiry is the most direct way to realizing the self. What do you say about self-inquiry? I like the analogy. 
you see that people tree, the huge tree at the entrance. <coughs> it has got a small fruit, very small tiny fruit. And you break, if you are able to have precision instrument, you can cut it. And in, inside that, there are very, very tiny seeds, very, very tiny seeds. And if you have got a precision instrument to break that tiny seed, there is nothing there inside. And that's put the, all these seeds together, that one seed is even small, so much, this much. And it can produce not only this people tree, but a thousand people trees. This is the creation, this is the world. This is the path of prayers. My gardener, I have ordered him to plant ten more. Within ten years, the whole thing will be people tree garden. But what Maharshi is, the path of Shreyas is, instead of looking at that, go to the seed, look at the seed, the truth. When you pay attention to the truth and find out, there is nothing there. And from nothing, not only this people tree, thousand people trees can be produced. That is the process of evolution. We have indulged with that for 3000 years. We have not found solution. Now Maharshi says, take the path of involution. That is, understand, this people tree came from such a tiny seed and focusing attention on this tiny seed means to break it, break it and then find nothing. From nothing, that is paying attention to this seed, Maharshi calls it, scorch it with attention. When you scorch it with attention, that seed of the people tree can no more sprout. This body, Premanand body, cannot be denied. Spirituality doesn't mean you should commit suicide. It will be there. But when you pay attention to this I am, there is no more people trees coming up from Premanand. Finished. Focus attention on the I am. Truth. Don't seek anything else other than the I am, the truth. And from any standpoint, you view, you, you view at the people tree, cut off the branches, cut off the leaves, again it will come up. Unless you take the path of Shreyas, that is the inward path, and focus all your attention on the now, the I am, doubts will always be there. Doubts of time, space and causation. Why do we seek the truth through untruth? Why not go straight to the truth? <coughs> and wasn't, wasn't self-inquiry a way of going direct to This is self-inquiry, going oh. to the root, going to that seed and then knowing for yourself, not as a knowledge. To take this seed, that is yourself, I am Ganeshan, son of so and so, born on such and such year, and this body is aged 68. All this is the branches of the people tree. And self inquiry is to know from where all these sprouted, to have the wisdom that from that seed of desire, that's what Buddha says. The seed of desire, desire is the seed. Maharshi helps us focus your attention on that, on that seed. No more birth, no more doubt, no more pain. Because that's the truth. Self-enquiry is to go within oneself and to know that there is nothing but truth, the I am. The I am that now speaks, the I am that now listens. 
the words spoken or from the I am, the words listened or from the I am position, that is focusing the attention on the seed, focusing attention on the truth, and that is what Maharshi says, self-enquiry is the only method, not the technical thing of who am I, I am not the body, I am not the, these are all just to play with the children, giving toys, so that you will be trapped. Because you are playing with the world outside, Maharshi gives you a few toys, so that other activities will be given up, at least you will um, pay attention to the very near thing, so that you will come back to the seed. Could you tell us how to conduct self-inquiry? Yeah. You have a very nice little booklet, yes, which sir. explains it, but yes, perhaps sir, you could you, shorten it for yes. us. If you want words, you get it there. <laughs> <laughs> and what is wrong in right, straight, right now, here and now, being the I am? Why do you want a technique? Because you already assume that you are not the truth for so many multifarious reasons. All this is untruth. Begin with the truth. Don't try to understand. This is what Jesus Christ said. Attain the truth first and truth will lead you to the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ did not say or give a definition about truth, or he did not say, have a correct understanding of truth, he did not say, attain, his word is, underst he did not say, know or understand truth, he did not say, attain, attain is that which is already there, attain the truth, what is the, already, the truth that is already attained, you are alive, existence, sat, the mere feeling of I am, how happy he looks, that's the I am, expressed, expressed in smile through the face, the I am is happiness. And when you pay attention to the truth, complete bring back all your wandering thoughts, doubts, the wrong claims on yourself that you are in bondage, you seek enlightenment just for some time, like in a barber shop, sweep them aside, focus attention the truth, the I am, right now here. This is what Jesus Christ says, attain the truth and that will lead you to the kingdom of God. If you are going to ask for a method, step by step, I can give you. You can get, get such methods from 50 different people. But I think we particularly like it from you. <laughs> and yeah, that is, that is the you, biggest you, trap. You could just be the world expert what, on this. That's what we are doing. <clears throat> from you is the biggest trap. Ganeshan, from you it should come. I won't fall into that trap. No, I think we'd like to. I mean, I'm not talking <laughs> lightly. <laughs> That's what we are having. This is what self-inquiry is being done. <clears throat> Please, wait a minute. Is it very difficult to understand the I am? And after listening to that story of I am John Wilkins, is there any doubt? What's your name? Claire. Claire? Yes. If you give up the idea, I am Claire, Claire, what is the difficulty in feeling the I am? Yes. That's self-inquiry. To give up Claire and focus attention on the I am, <coughs> not, if it is a technique, then it is dependent on time, space. You may say in Germany, there is a lot of distractions, only in Arunachala, only on the hill I will be able to do. <laughs> and Hindu scriptures and all scriptures say morning 3.30 to 5 o'clock is the most auspicious time. 
All this is untruth. This <laughs> moment is the only truth. It's certainly untrue, but for example, when you're working in a office in Dusseldorf, yes, sir. there are many distractions, yes, sir. and it's very easy to forget and think you're John Wilkins again. Yes, sir. And but so then in that moment, yes. self-inquiry is helpful. That, that is the wrong way. If you are paying attention from now, this moment onwards on the I am, whether you are in Dusseldorf or in Siberia, <laughs> in a prison, it doesn't matter. That's how saints have proved. I am sure you should have read some of the Desert Father's stories. They were tortured, they were put in prison. They were just chanting Jesus Christ's name. Because that is according to the story. But they were all the time in the I am, the truth. The non-truth of either a prison or a palace did not matter at all. If you start paying attention for the truth, in result of I assure you, not because I assure you, you will yourself experience, all these distractions will be going on, happening. Read the lives of saints, how Papaji was playful, seeing the TV, cricket match. Have you seen him? I spent five years with him, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he was always, just once, I don't know, in my presence somebody asked, what are you watching in that cricket match? He said, I am just looking. The I am is just looking. It is not the other way about. When you are rooted in the I am, whether you see a cricket match, either whether you are in a factory in a dazzle drop, it will all happen. Ramana Maharshi woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and was very active till 11 o'clock. And everyone, not only he was in that happy state, when you are in that state of I am, the factory workers will feel happy. <coughs> My master, Premananda is so happy. I want to be with Premananda. Why are they sticking to you? Or, I mean, figuratively I am saying, why they come to Arunachala? Here you are in the presence of yourself. Here, like a mirror, Arunachala shows you are the truth. And you should get established in the truth. Once you are established in the truth here and now, as Nisargadatta Maharaj said, the now is always, here is everywhere. It's very simple. The I within oneself wants to be recognized. <coughs> the I am wants to be recognized. It is always there having an urge to go back home, to be itself. The happiness that is within you has been corrupted by yourself, thinking that you are not. You are a German, you are a Christian. These are all the obstacles to your own happiness. You are holding on to this untruth. And the happiness that is within you is making an urge, come on, recognize me. Maharshi gives this beautiful example. If headache, is our natural state, we won't get, try to get rid of it. Why do we take immediately, what is the best tablet in Germany? In, Madra, in America it is Tylenol, in India it is Saridon. I don't know in Germany what is the painkiller, best painkiller. Why do you take that? Why are you in a very serious urge to get rid of the headache? Because you already know a state when there was no headache, you are happy. You already know. If you do not know, you will accept headache as your natural state. You do not. You want to get rid of this applies to all pain. Why do we want to get rid of the pain? Because we already know there is a state of happiness, peace. Now we are disturbed. When you read a newspaper, in Iraq there is a war, 15,000 people were bombed to death, you feel pain. What is that pain? And why do you want to get rid of it? Because you already know there is a state of peace which has been disturbed by this news. And you want to get rid of it, which means what? You want to go back to that state of peace. And you cannot bring about peace outside in the world. 
Are you stronger than Buddha or Jesus Christ? I don't know whether you follow that. How can we bring peace to the world? If Buddha could not bring peace to the world, if Jesus Christ could not bring peace to the world, is it not fallacious for us to think there should be a method by which peace can be brought, happiness can be brought to the world? Outside, there is no happiness. Inside, there is always happiness. That's why the importance of self-inquiry. Turn within, you are always happy. And give some thought, you get headache, and you have to seek for a pain color. And this we are going on, this is what Buddha calls as the wheel of birth and death. Birth and death, the wheel has to stop. And it can be stopped only by self-inquiry. Self-inquiry not as a technique, but knowing that you are the truth right now, here and now. When you are in desert drop, this is going to be the here. The now is always, when you look at the time, then you will see it is 5 ton. But when did we start? At 4 o'clock. Did you feel the passage of time? <coughs> Honestly? As time. I'm not saying there is no passage of time. Physically, mechanically, we have sat here for nearly an hour. And how, how did you feel? Be honest to yourself, not even express. The now. Happiness is always the now. The I am can only feel the now. Even in English language, what do you say? Yesterday, I was at Chennai. You don't say yesterday, I am at Chennai. <laughs> tomorrow, I will be at Bangalore. You don't say tomorrow, I am Bangalore. The I am can be mentioned only here and now. I am has no other value. Because it is the truth. It can express itself only in the now. I am. And this I am, the now, which is your I am, and my I am, there are no two I ams. There is only one I am. Maharshi even <coughs> gives this example. There are six billion bodies in the whole wor world belonging to different countries, having each body has a different name. There may be 10,000 Johns, but each body is referred to as John. <coughs> but Maharshi asks, <coughs> all these six billion bodies, when they refer to themselves, each one, how do they refer? What is the word in German for I? Ich. Ish. Ish. In Hindi it is me. In Tamil it is non. In whichever language, they use only one expression. They don't say Ganeshan. I say I. I agree to for your interview. I. Ganeshan agrees for your job. Premanandas interview. I don't say I. Everyone <coughs> says I. So Maharshi raises this question. Are there six billion I's? Just as there are six billion names. Or there are six billion eyes, he says, find out, or there is only one eye to which all these six billion bodies are referring to. This is self-inquiry. And that eye is you. You. <coughs> and see the truth. That's how you have to wake up to the truth. And that waking up to the truth is here and now. Who can say I am except in this present tense, here, now, right now? When Ramana was asked, when will the realization of the self be gained? He replied, when the world, which is what is seen, has been removed, there will be realization of the self, which is the seer. What is the true understanding of the world? You have to put this question in your deep sleep. 
Was there a world in the sleep? In the day waking state, all the scriptures give different answers to that. Sleep is also your experience. It's not a my experience. Your sleep is not my experience. Was there a world? Ask. And Maharshi says, right now, when there is no seer, actually Maharshi gives this example, sir. The word for <coughs> world in Sanskrit is lokaha. Lokaha, all Sanskrit words have deep meaning. It is not just a word. Lokyate iti lokaha, that which is seen. World is, if you expand that lokaha, the world in Sanskrit, lokaha, it means that which is seen. Anything that is to be seen must have a seer. So, when you pay attention to the seer, the I am, the scene drops off of itself. And what is the proof? In sleep, in deep sleep, there is no seen object at all, but the seer is alive. That's why the next morning you say, I slept well. The seer is the truth, the scene is non-truth, not as a statement. If you say, this world is non-existent, it is untrue, it's a blasphemy, it's there, this fan is there, this light is there. But Maharshi, that's why he answers, his answers are all in the form of questions. Find out, you are saying this world is true, your own experience, find out if this world was there in your deep sleep. Also try to find out what happened to that world if it was true. And the another question he says, has the world ever come and told you that I am there? It is you who say, this is fan. Has this fan come and told you, us, I am fan, I am fan? <laughs> <coughs> this we. Everything that is seen depends on the seer. And if you find out the truth about the seer, the seen becomes acceptable, not rejecting. None of the sages, you know Jesus Christ, how hard he worked. Buddha, after his enlightenment, how hard he worked, traveled. Shankara, Adi Shankara, traveled three times around India within 32 years. You know, several thousand miles. They have worked very hard. They are not lazy people. When you pay attention to the I am, you don't sit in a corner, you become very active. Everything is acceptable. In Dusseldorf, you will be a much better worker when you pay attention to the I am. This is what Jesus Christ says, attain the truth and truth will lead you to the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Everything. It is not somewhere there in the heaven. That is the kingdom of God. Everything has been created by God, including this body. When you attain the truth, that truth will lead you to the kingdom of God. You will be the happiest person whether you are in San Francisco or in Dusseldorf or in Berlin or in Moscow. What is worse than that? Beijing? <laughs> <laughs> how, how to remove the world? Who wants to remove that? Why do you want to remove that? What is wrong? If it is your creation, you can remove it. <laughs> well, Mahashi is suggesting that only when the world is removed will the self be That is because be the questioner was a professor rooted in book knowledge, the untruth, and instantaneously he has to be given that uh, removal thing. So he uh, talks about it. Who created and other places you see, why do you want to give up the world? Did you create it? Maharshi asks, who has created the world? He will take charge of it. Why are you bothered about it? Man's only creation is thought. You can't create anything. You may readjust. Permit me to share with you, sir. 1952, there was a conference of all scientists at Geneva. They wanted to evaluate 
how from stone age the man has improved because of scientific inventions all branches of science including medicine and astronomy and astrology every scientist were there and einstein was also there the conference was for 7 days so the first day each was scientist has to give in synopsis what they are going to talk for the 7 days so each one was claiming how much we have improved man has through science has attained this attained this from this state to this state and it is man's achievements man's achievements when it came to einstein i very well remember reading it in the paper that one sentence stuck to my heart he said sir it is true we brother scientists we have discovered so many things but please be humble don't be arrogant all of us scientists here put together still we cannot create a blade of grass and one drizzle the next moment or next day you will see millions of grass god is the creator we only adjust so world is not created by you maharshi says if you have created it you have got a right to reject or say it is untruth your only creation is thought maharshi in one place says i am asking you to look into that you are not looking into that the source of thought but you want to look at the world which are all not your creations the only control you is you have to control about the thought that is what is self inquiry all is based on from where this thought arises the man's creation the body is not created by you none of these world trees plants birds everything is was created by god in that we get disturbed because we start thinking we want to be clever and so the self inquiry makes you go to the path of inward path now that's why maharshi says plunge within dive within ask go to the source of thought as today i was so stunned to see read in jesus christ book i am not a christian i have not read bible but my friends have given some of these books they are almost the same thing christ says i will put my law within them and i will write it upon their hearts and i will be their god and they shall be my people and they shall all know me die within he also says go within there is light within a person of light and it it lights up the whole universe if it does not shine there is darkness that's the sleep when you pay attention to the i am you see that you are the light this the same words used by jesus christ also since you will be called my twin although you do not understand it yet you will be called the one who knows himself for whoever has not known himself knows nothing but whoever has known himself has simultaneously come to know the depth of all things when you are establishing the i am all your work gets attended pay attention to the truth all the non truth aspects the truth will take charge of it and de- denying the world or world's existence what are you going to achieve if it is your creation you can deny it and your experience of denial of the world is in deep sleep which you refuse to see experience it not make a sentence that world is untrue world is illusion make it into a state right now also there is no world not as a statement as an experience that's why i asked my friend how long how long time has passed one hour where is the world at this one hour 
You have not denied the world, but world was not there. This is what is meant by Bhagavan. The world will not be there. It is not that world will disappear, but you will be there. The I am will be there. It has been suggested that the mind must be destroyed for liberation to occur. Do you have a mind? The mind which manufactures the doubts by itself takes you back to the source The mind is the only link between the body and the self. Denying the mind, you don't achieve anything. Make it a servant. It will take you back to the truth. Make it a master. It will take you away from the truth. By denying the mind or asserting the mind, we are not going to achieve anything. <laughs> uh, Ramana used the term Mon Mononasa, is it Mononasa? Manonasa. To describe the state of liberation, meaning destroyed mind. How to destroy the mind? By staying in the now. Just now you are in that state. That's why I asked Premananda, in what state you are? You couldn't even answer. I mean, answer in the sense of words sentences through the mind. You did answer me by silence. There was no mind. That is Mano Nasha. The brain immediately translated, there should be permanency of no mind, which is an illusion. The now alone is the truth. Any attention you pay to the time, is non-truth. There is no time. If you pay attention to the now, Mano Nasa, that's why in that state all of us were there. When Robert Adams said, I am is the truth, John Wilkins is the non-truth, all the 80 people were in Mano Nasa. You may call it decorative words like Samadhi, ecstasy, these are all mere words. When Mano Nasa, Mano Nasa is the truth, Every moment there is Mano Nasa. We are uncomfortable. We jump to the place of the mind. That is what is the prayer's path. You want to extend because you are tempted by the pleasures of the world. The mind gets extended. When the, the very same mind with your attention, which Maharshi calls as, with attention, scorch the seed so that it will never sprout. The very understanding, this is wisdom, and that is Mano Nasa. The brain says, but when I go to Dasseldorf, will the Mano Nasa be there? If you stay in the now, it doesn't matter whether you are in Arunachala or in Dasseldorf. Every moment is Mano Nasa. Ramana Maharshi was living every moment, he was alive. Mano Nasa is not a stone-like, dead life. He was replying questions, he was reading even newspaper. He was very humorous, actively working, cutting vegetables for cooking, he did cooking. The mind was a servant. And very same mind will take you back there to the home, that self-inquiry. When the mind slips out, that's what Maharshi calls in, in this, uh, it is called Arunachala Ashtakam, eight verses. There, Maharshi starts with this statement, if you are in silence, don't disturb it, stay in that state. If a thought arises, ask, to whom has this thought come? So, Maharshi's teaching, I always like to share, 
is not who am I? Silence, Nano Nasha. And the moment you give importance to the non-truth of brain, can I have this manonasa always? Then Maharshi immediately says, ask who, who raises this question? When you are in manonasa, in this silence, as you were there, Premananda, that is manonasa. When you come out, because you have to complete your questionnaire, then the mind comes out, then you have to ask, who puts this question? To whom? Then it goes back to the manonasa state. Manonasa state is not a permanent state as the mind dictates. It must be permanent. What do you mean by permanent? Mahan Bhagavan ridicules the word eternal. Always is a trap. What is eternity? Even Sri Aurobindo, the contemporary philosopher said, a moment contains eternity. When you pay attention to this now, here, which is the truth, that is Mano Nasha. When the mind is there, it, is, it disturbs you. So wherever you are, even while in meditation, if you have thought, then you are not in Mano Nasha. When there is no thought, then it is Mano Nasha. Have complete faith in yourself. Maharshi has said, in one place, definition of sadhana, spiritual sadhana, I think you, you should have told them what is sadhana, the spiritual seeking, any effort, self-inquiry or japa, anything, that is sadhana. Maharshi has given, the definition for sadhana is descending from the brain to the heart, a movement from the brain to the heart. The brain, which distracts the mind, pulls it out. The descending to the heart means pull it back to its source. And you have to do it. No one else can do it. No book can do it. No technique can do it. And you are already doing it. You have already done it. You are already doing it. Non Recognition of one hour of passage of time is Mano Nasha. It is the mind which records time. Be honest, what is time? <coughs> 5 o'clock, now it is 5.30. At that time when I looked at it, it was 5.20, 5.10, now it is 5.30. Man-made. What movement is there? Is there, except the clock, even Big Ben in London, Huge big bun, <laughs> but still there is no movement of time. It is a movement of the hand in the clock. <coughs> now has no movement at all. Time has movement because mind has created the time. 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33. We have special wristwatches, yes, for, just for the retreat. Yes. But you look at it, it just says now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, that solves all problems. <laughs> <laughs> what about vasanas, mm -hmm. the tendencies of the mind? Yes. Must these be removed mm -hmm. before self-realization yes. can become permanent? Yes. How as, long as, as long as you identify yourself with the body, now I am a Hindu, I am a non-married man, 68 years old, what is it, senior citizen. Okay. <laughs> as long as I identify with that, these vasanas will be there. I will be doing only what I like, I will not do what I do not like. That's all non-truth. When you pay attention to the I am, when I do not even pay attention to the Ganeshan, I am Ganeshan, the Ganeshan aspect, I do not pay attention, there is no vasanas. Bhagavan used to say, in between India and Sri Lanka, in the olden days, they used to go travel by boat. 
it's not a very far off distance and not a very short distance also. Marsh used to say there is a particular place in between in the center when you are in the boat and this side you see Sri Lanka, the, some of the trees in Sri Lanka will be seen but India will not be seen. If you move the boat a little bit this side, the trees in India will be seen, the trees in Sri Lanka will not be seen. Move this side, these trees will be seen, this will not be seen. The same way, if you pay attention to vasanas, you have to adhere to that. Suffer or suffer in the sense, enjoy pleasure and consequent there to pain. It is unavoidable. Vasanas are unavoidable if you pay attention to the body. There was a lady cook, a child widow in Ramanashram. A child widow means at the age of six or seven, they become widow. Afterwards, that girl, even when she grows up, she cannot indulge in the world in any form. They are given free food and then kept in ashrams. And they were given spiritual teaching. They lived, live a very upright, moral, ethical life. And such a lady at the age of 50 asked Bhagwan, Bhagwan, I have been following your path, but why there is no fulfillment? Maharishi's answer startled me, startled me because first time when I read it. He said, because you have not had enough of the world. What can that child widow cling to the world? The thought that she has not, the only one defect in her was the thinking that I have been following your path. I am not experiencing it. That single thought was her creation. And that moment when Bhagavan said, because you did not have enough of the world, that moment it dropped and she was all the time established in the I am. I have met 60 old devotees of Bhagavan who were established in the I am while the prarabdha of the body was going on. There is one famous incident, myself and my secretary, we have witnessed. There is a saintly man who fell from the, at, his, at the age of 96. We were looking after him, all beautiful person, a great astrologer. He can predict absolutely 100% correctly. But he never gave predictions. After seeing Maharshi, he gave up astrology. Because Maharshi said, he was very convinced of his prediction power. So he asked, is not astrology a perfect science? Maharshi gave the reply, the science of the self is superior to all sciences. On that day he left astrology and started seeking, became a beggar in the streets in Trivandamali for nearly 50 years. In the last days we had the great fortune, good fortune of looking after him. And he fell from the bed and broke his thigh bone, 96, very fragile body. And all the doctors said, we can't do anything, operation, nothing can be done. So I asked the doctors, what will happen? Gangrene will set in and excruciating pain, he will die. There is no other go. And he was always in the room. We used to go and say, I was always, I used, I'm an emotional man. I used to cry looking, seeing him suffer. So I used to ask, how is your leg? He will say, ah, when you ask me that question, there is pain for the body. Can you, when you are having excruciating pain, just give a simple answer. Yes, when you draw my attention to the body, yes, there is pain. Then I asked, in what state are you? I am all the time in this blissful state of I am. And he died of that. 11 o'clock he was to die. 9 o'clock we were with him. How are you? I am happy. <laughs> How about your leg? If you draw my attention to that, there is pain. They can, that beautifully, this is prasrapta, vasana. If you choose the truth, here and now, that's the purpose of your, all your visits. Please wake up. As this speaker woke up in 1960, 
not that I am claiming that I am realized all that is bullshit, nonsense. The realization is a continuous now and it is always available to all. It is not just one person seated here because you have been kind enough to give me the projection of the, all their attention on me. In no way I am better than you. When you say in 1960 you had an awakening, can you tell us what you mean? Yes, just, just the same, passage of no passage of time. The same, I am <coughs> the now. When you shift your attention from paying attention to time, to the now, time loses all its importance. Either past or these 35 years or how long I am going to be there, none of these matter. As long as you are going to pay attention to the time, I assure you, we are going to be again born for 5,000 more years. <laughs> it, it appears essential to meet a guru and to stay with that guru. Who is the guru? What is the guru's role? How to recognize a true guru? <laughs> I am is the guru, only guru. <laughs> Because he is the only permanent truth. All other gurus <coughs> are imaginations. That's what Jesus, Moses was told by God, I am that I am. And Jesus Christ also said, I am the way, I am the goal. For the I am, no religion, no caste, no body, no country, anywhere, everywhere, all the time you are I am. And that's the only Guru. Guru means the word Guru, as Premananda might have explained to you. Guru, removal of darkness. Holding on to time is darkness. A removal of time concept is I am. So, I am is the safest Guru. Nowhere to go around seeking, no payment, no travel, no photograph, no video, no book. You are that. See how beautifully she smiles, that's the I am. That's the Guru. <clears throat> How to recognize a true Guru? <laughs> you are already. What is there to recognize? Who to recognize the I am? Who asked this question? How to recognize I am? Maharshi has answered all your questions. Do you have to say that I am a man? Do we ever of us, ever one of us say man or woman? Because we already know. The I am is always there. How to recognize I am is a funny question. <laughs> Maharshi gives an answer. He quotes from a Tamil scripture where it is said, if, if the tongue is removed, tongue is very important to utter words, whichever language it is. If the tongue is removed, you can't talk. So Maharshi says, a person who is asking how to recognize I am, is like a man without a tongue asking, I have no tongue. <laughs> Saying, I have no tongue. How can he say if he has no tongue? <laughs> if you are not I am, how can you put this question? How to find the I am? And how this dead corpse, if this is a dead corpse, you don't put that question to a dead corpse. This is the person alive. This aliveness is the I am. Simple being is the self, my master's words, which attracted me first time. Because all others give definitions of truth, self, everything. If you go to Hinduism, 
volumes are written brihadaranyaka upanishad is de description of the self what is self it gives atma my master said simple being you are being alive now whether asleep or awake you are alive that simple being is the self that simple being is the i am the one who raises the doubt the one who pretends to answer the doubt ramana's devotees <laughs> had tremendous devotion to him and he to arunachala yes please say something about bhakti devotion yes sir in the pursuit of awakening yes sir unless you love something even your child your wife you cannot pay attention to them that is bhakti <coughs> what can be dearer to you than your own life that's why we are all you are all here spending so much money so much of energy that's love that's bhakti not to particular object that's a <coughs> lawyer lawyer way of explaining bhakti each one is interested in himself that's why we are all here to find out the truth the only mistake is we are walking in the western direction but we are all sincere we want to know the truth so that's bhakti this attention is bhakti ramana maharshi paid attention to arunachala and we all paid attention to arunach ramana and you all pay attention to premananda this is bhakti not to that personal being or an object turn to always to yourself what is that state that has attracted you to premananda that is bhakti not you are paying attention to premananda or falling at his feet that is all expression of that bhakti this longing to love premananda that is bhakti and everyone has bhakti everyone wants to know the truth to wanting to know the truth is bhakti and to know that you are the truth is wisdom <laughs> seekers often have curious ideas about the awakened state please describe your typical day and how you perceive the world sorry sir i I've, seekers I've, yes often have uh, strange ideas curious ideas about the awakened state yes sir please describe your typical day mm. day by day mm. and how you perceive the world mm. why are you accusing only the seekers even the so called enlightened people who announce i got my enlightenment on february 7 1977 is an illusion so the seeker who thinks that he has to attain enlightenment is an illusion there is no illusion other than you are postponing to know that you are the truth postponing that is postponing means what paying attention to time tomorrow in india space you are in germany and you think when you come to india you will get enlightened the space importance to space not to enlightenment <laughs> and somebody tells you or read in a book follow this path i will give you step 1 2 3 6 7 sec- 16 steps after 3 years you will get enlightenment time oriented all this is fooling yourself because the truth is not bound by time and space the moment this moment is the truth and this moment may be for this speaker for convenience sake the speaker may say 1960 i request you let this moment the now be recorded in your life as 8 January 2005 your moment of awakening 
Now, this moment, every moment is an awakening state. There is no state other than the now as some awakened state. Maharshi once said, this is quite often quoted, a day will come, you will laugh at yourself that have I done, have I struggled all these years for this? <laughs> and then he adds, it happened to her today. Yes, yes. He adds, let that day laughing at yourself be now. A day will come, maybe, I hope it is not so. For this speaker, it was the past. For some of you, maybe the future. The awakening is more important, whether it is in the past or in the future. You will laugh at yourself. Is this for this? I have been struggling hard. And thinking that I have followed or not followed, I stumbled, I achieved, not achieved. It's a laughing stuff. <laughs> See? <laughs> I like her. <laughs> it is the truth. Hmm. Papaji once told him, when I was there, he said, when you laugh, there is no mind. <coughs> because you are the I am. <laughs> the mind brings in sadness, thought. Thought either of pleasure or pain. If you think of ice cream now, you have pleasure thought. Ah, it's a thought. You think that thought has brought you pleasure. No, you cannot laugh if there is a mind. At the moment of laughter, any one of us, not only her, at the moment of laughter there is no mind. That is the state of I am. Happiness, bliss, ananda, prema ananda. He is love. Always enjoying the love, immersed in bliss. Not only he, all of us. We don't, we have failed to recognize it. What is the time to choose to recognize it? Now. The enlightenment is always in the now. Don't believe anyone who says he had enlightenment in 1960, this fool. <laughs> Or some, uh, some other fool who says, 1977, at a particular place, I had enlightenment. He's bluffing you. <laughs> because, no, I'm not criticizing or ridiculing that particular, whoever he may be. Any attention on time is bluffing. Because time, there is no time. Tell me, where is 5.20? Now it has already become 5 minutes to 6. <laughs> Look at that fellow, he's fooling, fooling you us. Have a, you have a very fast clock. <laughs> yeah. he's fooling. Mine, mine just says now. <laughs> That's why you are happy. I am unhappy because I'm looking at the clock. We can exchange if you like. <laughs> I'm so happy, Premananda. Extremely happy. You've given us a profound discourse on awakening. When you would meet someone with a passion for awakening, yes. what would your short advice be? <laughs> <laughs> There is no short or long. <laughs> Be happy. Actually, I share with my friends, <coughs> ask any, any one of my friends, my mantra. People used to ridicule me. You don't give initiate into any mantras? Because in other places, they initiate you. Special chosen disciples, method of initiation, everything is there. They expect me to do that. You don't initiate into any mantra? I said, who said so? I also initiate into mantra. <laughs> Sir, I, we never heard that. They said you only talk dry self-inquiry, not in, initiate into mantra. I said, who said so? I also initiate into mantra. 
be happy. <laughs> this is my mantra, mantra path, bhakti path, jnana path, yoga path, karma path, everything. Be happy, it includes everything. And it is so alive, it is the truth. It's not separate from the truth. Happiness, bliss, whatever you call it. Ananda. And you are that. So, I am not going to add something to you. You are already Ananda. I am only saying, directing your attention on the truth that you are always the truth. Be happy. That's the mantra. Greatest mantra. Be happy. <laughs> Have you ever heard any better mantra? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there is one quite nice, which is, be happy, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> don't worry, the negati any form of negativity, Mother Krishna Bhai told me. I asked her, what is mind and what is self? <clears throat> any positive feeling is self, any negative feeling is mind. And she even advised me, don't ever use any negative terms. I asked, how is it possible? It is possible. If you pay attention to the positivity of yes, you need not say no at all. The no comes from the mind, from the brain. And the yes comes from the heart. I asked her to explain. She said that, suppose if you invite me to your room or Premananda invites me, come to Nanagaru's ashram at 8 o'clock in the night. It's the easiest, the mind image is no. And then it supports it, I've got some other engagement. <coughs> it may be true or it may be false, it doesn't know. The negativity is the burden of the mind. It wants to escape. What is negativity? Escaping from being the truth. That's falsehood. It's very heavy. But when I say yes, even if I had a commitment at 8 o'clock, I have to see that that is cancelled and then I have to fulfill my, commit, my agreeing, saying yes. And this positivity is the heart's language. Aruna Chalashiva Aruna